all over the ACC. Joe Novak with his arms up. We stopped the world! Well, Coach, before we talk about the 20th uh, anniversary of the 2003 team, just tell us a little bit about, you know, some of the key things uh, that that was a turnaround uh, for the program, Coach Novak. I'll be honest. When we had, at that point, I think we were 3-30 and 30 after three years. I mean, I had a lot of doubts. I really did. I started questioning everything. I questioned my wife. I questioned the coaches, <laughs> their kids. I mean, I questioned a janitor, uh, Dick Townsend. I questioned him. I mean, I just, I was searching, you know, we were, we weren't winning. We, I thought we were getting better and I knew it was going to take a while, but I think the best thing we did. And I, as I look back, we stayed consistent. We didn't change. We, we, we ran the same offense basically uh, every year. We ran the same basic defense. Now Scott came in there and started blitzing and that really helped us too at the time. But, but the basics to what we did, we didn't change. And there were, I was this close to making a bunch of changes. And finally I said, you know what? I believe in what we're doing. I believe in these coaches. I believe in these players. If we change and fail, then I'm going to kick myself right in the rear end. And I said, we're going to, we're going to fail. We're going to fail doing it our way. And we did. And it worked out. And uh, I think that was the biggest thing. And certainly as we got better, we started playing people better and going to Illinois when they were big 10 champs that year and darn near beating them and Auburn going down there and making playing Auburn till the last quarter really well. And, all that happened, and all of a sudden, boom, we beat Wake Forest and then Maryland, and good things happened. We beat Bowling Green. That was a big win. Bowling Green in Miami in 2002, beating Bowling Green, like Scott said, with the Thundersticks. That was one of the greatest atmospheres. I remember Urban Meyer tells me after the game, he says, damn, he says, this is a hard place to play. And, and, and going down to Miami and being down 24-7 in the third quarter and coming back and winning 48-41 against Roethlisberger. I mean, those were amazing wins, and and like I said, our kids believed. So, it, like, it seemed like they was more concerned about our offense than we was concerned about theirs. You know, uh, they want to keep us off the field because we know we we can score at any moment. Um, you know, we was a dangerous team. That was a real offensive showdown, and I think for both sides, you know, Mike had an incredible game, right? So, so uh, we were putting up the run yardage, and they were putting up the pass yardage. Uh, Mike was running the ball so quickly for touchdowns that we were defensively on the field almost the entire game. So we were exhausted. And little did we know if Roethlisberger would be an incredible NFL quarterback. But you could tell uh, he was very impressive and had a heck of an arm. And, um, but that was a long fought game. I remember in the fourth quarter at Miami, it was it was Sheldon on one play and Turner on the other, and they couldn't stop either one of them. We scored 34 points, I think, in the fourth quarter to win that football game going away. But, but what fun we had. We really did. But I think we stayed consistent. And our, our kids were tough. They were great kids to work with. And most of them are doing real well in the real world like I expected they would. Yeah, it was a wild game, man. Uh, it was one of the one of the great moments of uh, NIU history right there. You know, it's hard to believe it's been 20 years since uh, the 2003 team. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, for the coaches that were on that staff, you know, just tell us a little bit about what you remember. Um you know, what specifically about that team made it special um, in that season? You beat Maryland, you beat Alabama, you beat Iowa State. Uh, I remember, um, you know, my last year was 2002, and I was a GA at Wisconsin at the time, and I was talking so much trash um, because the year before, Coach Novak, they, they robbed us uh, yeah. with, with a pass interference call uh, late in the game. Punt. And, uh, punt. Yeah. It calls for holding on to punt in the end zone. Yes, yes. They – you know, they had Big Ten officials, but that's a, yeah. that's another story. Um, but uh, just tell us a little bit about what you what you saw at that team. Uh, we'll start with Coach Canada. Oh, it was a special group of guys that I think, you know, we've talked about it. 02 was such a good year. We were 8-4, and four, and in the games the coaches mentioned, I think that got us going. You know, beating Bowling Green in 02, and, you know, Coach is talking about that was the greater. You know, he mentioned Urban, but Urban over there pumping his fist and, that's my memory of 02 before I get to 03 is coach giving that one when we made the big play. So um, that win in reference to Miami, but I think there was so much momentum coming into that team. And, um, you know, there's just, it'd be hard. I mean, there were so many big plays in, in that season, the three big wins, but like Ohio, we came back and beat Ohio in a tough game. There was just so many good, good players and good guys. And it, it was just a real, real strong belief for me, probably, um, you know, you talk about, 
cool moments you remember in the locker room in Alabama was big. Um, the one thing I remember, I'll sell two real quick and I'll get off, but the first one was in Alabama going into that game. I had talked to the offense about, Hey, we're going to vic- we're going to victory is going to burn. I'll have our arms up. We're going to win the game. That's the deal. We, you know, we're winning the game. We actually got to take, take a knee to win the game. But as you all know, as coaches, we had the time chart and I got the time chart and I'd had the time chart when we beat Eastern Michigan, our second win. When I talked about how silly of a coach I was then, right? So I wasn't real great then. I'm not saying I was great in 03, but I pretty well studied it. So I got the time chart. I know we can take it and we're good. And somehow there's chaos. Can we do it? Can we not? Can we? And I'm sitting on the oh, where I always sit on the left. Chase over there. He looks at me. He's like, can we take a knee? I won't say exactly what I said back. So we take a knee and we win and it's awesome. But I missed us taking a knee. I never got to see it. I didn't get to see their guy's arms up. I missed the whole deal. So, um, but that was a great memory and a funny story and a fun time. But then after Iowa State, I was sitting with Shave talking. And um, I remember Coach came up and the three of us, it was just, it was awesome. That that run, that 4-0 run, beating those guys as we built through it with Mile and Deuce, you know, guys who had been there who had left. And Roche was gone then. But the staff, the, the, the work, you were gone. I mean, great players. But to have beat those three, you know, big schools, boneyard wins in a row and, and before and oh, it was just a real cool moment. And that's I remember that. That was that's one I'll take. You know, Coach Canada, it was uh, I never told you this, but you know, when, when we worked together and we was in a championship game, and uh, you know, you looked at me and said, Hey, go down there and be with your guys. Um, that was a big moment uh for me. Um, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about, but that was that was a big moment, you know, to, to be in a in a booth with you uh, side by side. And then you told me to go downstairs and because we had we had the game in hand and go be with your guys. Uh, I really appreciate you doing that. Yeah, that was a that was a good night, too. Different, like you said, a different <laughs> story. But I'll take yeah. that. I'll take that memory, too. <laughs> Coach Pitt. Appreciate it. I just remember um, before. Maryland and they come off uh, Orange Bowl win. I, I believe they won the Orange Bowl and they were 14th coming in and we set all them dummies out there on the on the field. <laughs> it's hot as hell. It was at night, you know, and we was watching the Orange Bowl, uh, Maryland's Orange Bowl win with the team. You know, Joe had her coach. Excuse me. Uh, he had a he had a knack uh, to to figure out how to motivate. I mean, he really did. And I remember that. And then. Of course, we won that game. And then I remember Monday of the Alabama game, um, coach came walking through. Like you say, he might have been going to see defense. He might have been stopping in to see us as well. But he came through. And usually the board, you remember, Matt, the board's usually full of runs by, I don't know, 10 a.m. in the morning or something on Monday. Right. Coach come walking through. There wasn't a damn run on the board. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. go, what do you like? And I said, not much right now. <laughs> I remember we put a trap play in. You remember that, Matt? Yes, sir. Put a trap play in because we were doing it off the pin and pull. And Mike rushed for over 150 that day. Of course, it's Mike Turner, you know. <laughs> Might not have mattered what we called, you know. But uh, I can remember that. And, and, uh, and, uh, you know, like you said, the Ohio game, because I think it was game five and we're 4-0 and and we're rolling and we have to come back from behind. But I think P.J. might have caught one in the corner, I think, if I remember right, yep. to win that game. And uh, then I had Matt Rogers the next morning, 6 a.m., Sunday morning, running in. <laughs> he didn't know how to go to class. But anyway, that was that was kind of some of my memories on that. Oh, Shay. Oh boy, so many. I've been thinking about it because I knew it would come up. But you know, for the most part, it's the players, the people, the coaches uh, from that game: Vince Reynolds, Travis Moore, Leonard Cooksey. You know, uh, Brian Atkinson was a strong side. Nick Duffy in the middle. We we're playing Javen Lee, and uh, Kirsten Strothman was a young kid figuring out his way. Keel Grant and Boogie on the hash marks. Those two to hit anybody, and then Rob Lee and and uh, and Randy Drew on the other side. You know the players, the players. Um, 
because that's what we didn't have before. You know, we had good kids that, that didn't have quite the ability levels. And that was the biggest thing that I remember. And then as far as the game goes, Matt stole, Matt stole the story. I was asking him if we could kneel it or not. And me and Matt have known each other since, since he was a student at Indiana. So we're sitting up there looking at each other. And then when we won, I just remember just sitting there looking out there and, uh, you know, just thinking, holy mackerel. Now, I can remember Schaefer just letting us know that, you know, we're better than, than what, you know, you think you are. So he knew what kind of type of defense that, you know, he had. And we, we had a great defense, as you can see. We, we had at least about, I want to say at least eight people that was all conference on our defense, defensively, you know. So we was experienced. Uh, we knew what we was doing. I mean, and we was confident. We were lacking in several categories compared to other schools. And, and the way we looked at it is we're doing it the hard way. And um, that gave us a little bit of a chip on our shoulder, I think, to go out there and say, hey, we don't have what you have, but we can outplay you. We can play just as hard as you can. The key to the game from, from my perspective, and I think our perspective just generally was, you know, trying to stay ahead of the chains and stay out of second and third along where we could. I think as you, you know, watch the game plan and the type of passing situations that we put ourselves in, there was a lot of shotgun um, getting out of the pocket, bootlegging where we could, and, and just trying to keep them off balance as much as we could. Alabama gave me confidence personally that, yeah, I can, I can really play at the next level. You know, I, you know, I had a good game against, like, Maryland, Wisconsin, but they didn't have the hype that Alabama had. You know, it was, it was like a different feeling. And being on the, you know, being on the road, going down there and, and pulling that off, uh, really kickstarted my, you know, like this guy can really play at the next level. One of the moments that stick with me for for now and, and, and for the rest of my life would be when the clock hits zero and just being in a stadium uh, field at capacity to ninety six thousand plus and just hearing it silence. And I'll never forget that silence as I looked around and and just savored that moment. I, I think that's something I'll take with me for the rest of my life. One story I wanted to tell is Denny Dornboss took over for Pat. <laughs> So Denny was singing when I was in the box. We had told the, the team that if, if we won, when we won the game that we were going to spend the extra money we made and, and fix Denny's finger. I don't know if you remember Denny he had that broken damn finger in it. You're awful, Shay. Remember that? That was a horrible finger. Remember that? And I think he it's got so it fixed bad. after that game. That's terrible. But we got we got Denny on a headset and they called their last time out. There was a minute and forty something, I think, and. Uh, and I had called a blitz, an all-out seven-man pressure twice earlier in the game, Dues, Storm, that Dues introduced to me and Mike when we played against Hofstra. And we had a horrible athlete get six sacks in one game. Remember that, Mal? <laughs> and yeah. long story short, called it twice. I was 0 for 2. Call timeout, and I hear Hickenbottom on the headset. And Denny's like, Lionel wants to say, and Lionel's like, run it, coach. We got it. Run it again. And, and we ran it, and uh, and Rob Lee was a nickel in that situation. And he come off, he hit the quarterback, ball comes out, Lionel puts his hand on it, game over. And the kid called the, the kid. Lionel Hickenbottom called that last call. We get down to the locker room, and we got we, you know, we get down there a little bit late coming out of the box. And right after we finished the fight song and all those things, just what Joe said, they wanted two things. They wanted the shower and they wanted those damn chicken sandwiches. I don't know if it was Chick-fil-A or what, but they were going nuts over the Chick-fil-A's. All those South Side Chicago kids, they had never had that. And that's a memory I had right there. You know, it was like the perfect meal after the perfect win. Was Novak? 2003. Oh, God, I don't know where to start, Thomas. I mean, that year was, you know, after we beat Maryland, all of a sudden the media got a hold of us and – I spent, you know, as I said, I spent so much time raising money the last four years to build facilities. Well, after those wins that year, I spent more time on the telephone, on TV. I mean, we had calls literally from all over the country. We had talk shows from New York City, Seattle, Washington. And, and, and I remember Mike Korchuk coming over and said, Joe, I hate to keep busy. I said, Mike, I'd rather have it this way than having nobody giving a damn. Because, you know, back in 98, there's a guy out there, uh, Chet Wojciechowski, I think his name is, a great writer. I mean, I read his stuff to the day. But he wanted to do an article on us because we had lost 26 in a row. 
and he came to Mike Korchik and he said, I want to, I want to follow the team for a week and write an article about you. And I thought about it. And I said, no, I said, that, that's all negative. I said, no, I said, just do me a favor. We're not going to let you do that, but I want you to come back when we start winning. And, and, and I, I just remember all of a sudden we were getting all this publicity and newspapers and attention and we were ranked in the, in the polls and it was so much fun and it just went by so quickly. And, and then and I don't make excuses, but we started to get Nick up. We lost Nick Duffy there up at Central Michigan, and that was just a killer. You know, you look at the exposure you get now on ESPN and, and some of these other networks, and I'd like to think that we were a big part of not only helping change the program, um, getting more exposure for the Met Conference. You know, it, it, it's just a lot of pride. It's just a lot of just satisfaction. And, and what we accomplished as the team, the group of guys we had on the field, uh, and going into a place like that and, and being able to play the way we did and, and come out as victors, it's something that Coach Novak's absolutely right. Um, nobody can ever take that away from us. I'll certainly never forget it. I got, I got the scoreboard with the score mounted in my office on the wall that if, if folks make their way you know, far enough in the office, it's a good discussion piece. So it's... Um, it's one of a handful of awesome, not a handful, one of a ton of memories um, in the 2003 season, but certainly it's, it's closer at, at the top from a just what it meant to all of us collectively. Doing it as a team, doing it the way we did, uh, it was just a lot of fun. Like I said, there were so many great memories and great times and attention, and we tried to absorb as much as we could. I remember Fleck being on the uh, uh, what's his name, Tom Rinaldi, did a thing on us on ESPN. and I mean, all that kind of attention for Northern Illinois at that time was invaluable, invaluable. And uh, like I said, just great memories, great people, and uh, it's just great to, to have that time and things to remember. And it is intercepted! Intercepted by Northern Illinois! And they have won the football game! Unbelievable! An unbelievable play! The Mid-American Conference! Rules over the ACC. Joe Novak with his 